Well, my friends, this is Jay, and look, I'm back in business. <laughs> All my little camera problems are taken care of. Uh, for uh, thankful to my son and to Amazon. So I don't even want to waste time. I want to get right into it. And for those that are joining us, I hope that you too will want to knit this uh, Autumn Breeze Lace Poncho. And we're knitting it in the round top down. <laughs> Alright, when I left, we had taken care of, just real quick, we had taken care of the one by one ribbing neckline. And uh, got all that done for at least... Uh, uh, two inches or two inches and a half, whatever. And then we did a complete knit round to clean all the stitches up. Then I shared with you how I just do a simple increase, everyone, everywhere, every size, so that we have enough stitches to move to the shoulder area. And then one more round of just knitting where we put in markers. That's where I ended when my camera just went kaput. <laughs> but everyone should be up. Hopefully you finished that part. And I said, when we come back, everyone should be ready to uh, work row five. We should be on, here's the right side of your work, of course, because we're knitting in the round. And we're going to start with row five. So hopefully you have that done. And now I just want to give you just a little FYI information uh, before we get actually into knitting. We're going to be knitting tonight. So... Uh, let me just switch. I don't even have to change the camera or anything. Just real quick. I like to give you any kind of information. Let me just move my camera down just a little bit. Don't get dizzy. Just a little bit. Okay. Now, this is the book that I have been working out of for two years. I went back and checked my video. Two years ago, I found my this book in my stash. <laughs> And I thought, well, I had never used it. This is Melissa Leapman's Knitting Modular. It's sh uh, shawls, wraps, and stoves. Well, of course, I went really, she has patterns in here, but I, uh, you know, they were just not for me. But what I wanted to do once I started getting into the charts, I fell in love with the way uh, things were worked in the book and uh, all the information. And I just kept. I, every time I tried to leave, I just I was drawn back to this book. So I wanted you to see, just for those who bought the book, I, I don't sell a lot of merch. I don't sell yarn. I don't do all that. But I do let you know if it's a stitch book or something that I like and you might want to know, you know, Jay, uh, what's the stitch book you're using? Uh, I'll put an affiliated link over in my comment section. But surprise, this is the chart. We are going to work chart number 95. For those that have the book, if you're not ready for chart still, they have. she has all the written instructions. I'm doing a little change. I'll have a little change in us working from the chart and working in the round. So just, you know, just listen to me and just make the change, appropriate change. Uh, where she purled because she's, this is for knitting flat. We're knitting it around, and we're going to be knitting on what we'd call the wrong side. But anyway, here's the chart, and of course, I have enlarged the chart, and I'm going to give you a good screenshot of that. I just want you to know where the which chart we're working from and the book again. Now, let me show you this. I'm trying to answer all any questions that I thought, or that even in my mind, that I could answer just in case. All right, let me show you this real quick. All right, right off the bat, as you saw in um, in my pictures, my poncho, since it's knitted in the round, and, you know, uh, I feel like I'm a seasoned knitter, and a lot of the people that follow me are, you know, seniors or older or more seasoned knitters. And so I put the lace or the chart in the back and the front. Well, I know that I have to stop and think sometimes. You know, we do have people who are new, even if you season, you may be new at reading charts. And you might say, okay, Jay, with the charts and all that you're telling us, uh, is it possible not to just put the lace in the back? Can I still? Yes. Glad you asked. <laughs> but I want to give you an idea and show it to you first so you can get see it 
this is a piece that I've got knit ahead so that you can see it. But as you can see this, maybe if I kind of lift it up. This is the back of the poncho without the lace. Now, this is not uh, the ra it, this raglan does not, we do not work the raglan in the sleeves like we do a top down s sweater for this one. The raglan is worked in the back and in the front. Can you see the raglan uh, yarn overs right there? See how they come down? I don't know if I'm doing a good job or not. I can't, oh, maybe like that. Can you see how it forms a raglan? Just like we, when we put the lace, just like on the front of the poncho, here is the raglan lace coming down. Can you see that? So that's the part we have to increase on since we don't have sleeves because it's a poncho. So all, even though you, when we start knitting from the chart in just a minute, if you don't put, uh, if you go with the no lace in the back, you will still have to follow each uh, row or round and make sure that we add these yarn overs when we start the round and when we end the round. That's all you have to do. And it just comes out. I just want you to have a visual. Sometimes it's hard to visualize something, but it turns out cute either way. Whether you put the lace all in the front and the back like I did, or just decide, hey, I want to concentrate on the front and the chart. I'm trying to think, is there anything else before we get started? Because now I want to give you, uh, go over uh, the chart. The main thing of that I'm trying to uh, share with you in learning how to work charts as we go into more uh, intricate charts, this chart is really simple. There's just 36 rows, a lot of rows. But if you would take the time and prepare the chart, I'm telling you, you will knit faster, uh, less mistakes. It will be more enjoyable. You won't have a lot of wasted time. Everything will be right out, but it's in the shorthand me method or in the shorthand style rather than reading each line from the written instructions. Does that make sense? So, the shorthand version, once you get used to it, it's a snap. <laughs> All right, let's get right into the next thing. Let me give you a good uh, view of the chart. And let's get started. Now, something that I am, you know, trying to get you in the habit of as we dive deeper into knitting from charts is how to take a look at the chart and prepare the chart. It takes just a few minutes to go through these steps that I'm going to share with you and that I've shared with other charts. Again, we're working chart number 95. And as you can see, Starting down here at the bottom, there's a lot of rows, 36 rows, although we're not, we only have to start at row 5, but you can see here, it's a nice long chart. So the first thing on, a, when I have a lot of rows in a chart, the first thing I like to do is find the center. And of course, working from Alyssa Leakman's book, it's very easy. You just go down to row 1, you see the center stitch right there, and I took a pink highlighter and just went straight up the center of the chart. Just straight up the center. Preparing this chart is not only going to build your confidence. Uh, it's going to cut down. You can knit a lot faster. Uh, you're not going to make near as many mistakes, if any at all. You're probably going to, you know, once you just get comfortable, you'll sail right through. Because we are preparing the chart. Just taking a look and doing things ahead of time so that we don't have to stop right in the middle of knitting uh, as we uh, knit the chart. Alright, so I have a center mark now. Now I know I have, you know, if I'm working on this side, I'll know if I've crossed the center mark. Be or, and then work on the opposite side. The next thing I want you to do is just to look around or look in her, um, uh, in her notes or anything on the chart and see if there are any symbols that she wants us to take a make note of or to watch for or in case we don't know how to do. Well, I, since I may simply enlarge the chart, there was nothing to worry about. She didn't put any extra notes. So when I looked at the symbols, guess what? They're all the same. It's just a lot of them. 
<laughs> in fact, there's only three symbols. This is a shorthand. When I'm using the symbols, we're going to call this the short. The chart is the shorthand version of all those row by row words you see in the book. All right. The symbol, the three symbols that we're going to use. All right. Here's a symbol that leans to the right. Can you see it? Leans to the right of the chart. We're simply going to knit two stitches together. Then there's a circle. That stands for yarn over. That's an increase. This symbol leaning to the right is a decrease. They just kind of, uh, you know, equal each other or cancel each other out. That's all it is. That's what lace does. You increase, decrease, increase, decrease. All right. Now, when I cross the center mark, look, there's another yarn over. Of course, I know that uh, another circle says yarn over. But now look, the next symbol is a symbol leaning to the left. Okay, and we can do several things, but we're going to simply do a slip, slip, knit. It just gets the job done. You don't have to think about it. Slip, slip, knit, leans to the left. Three symbols for this whole chart. Isn't that great? <laughs> the next thing we want to come, um, make sure we're on the same page with, the white boxes or, or white squares or empty squares on the front. Or oh, when we're knitting, right side, we'll simply knit. So right here, I'll simply knit one, two, three. See? Nothing. Now, if we were uh, on the wrong side, if we were knitting flat, if we were knitting flat, I don't know why I'm, <laughs> I guess I'm excited. We would probably, we would purl back. A oh, oh, empty box would represent purl. But remember, we're knitting this puncher in the round, so we only see the right sides. Right sides knit, unless she tells us in a, the pattern to do something else. So instead of purling back, we will simply knit around. I'll work a row and then knit the next row. See, and I'll show you how we're going to uh, tell the difference so that we can keep up with what round we're on. Okay, the chart says it's got a row, but we're going to be working in the round. All right, so now let me look. Okay, so. We have to work this chart, like I said, all the way from row 5 to row 36, all the way through the first time. Then comes into play the repeats. Because as we're working, we're increasing, increasing. You can see uh, when I share it with you how it increases out in the front and the back. Even though we're not putting pattern, if you don't want pattern in the back, you still have to put the yarn overs to increase. We'll take care of all that. But here's the actual repeat box here in the dark outline that simply means and when at, we get to the repeat section when we start repeating then I will put a yellow highlight on this side and a yellow highlight on this side but if I do it too early sometimes if a person's new they get confused like okay now why is that yellow highlight there before you do the whole chart so I will do that and remind you let's see if there's anything as we've covered the that Oh, yes, something really important. When we are uh, looking at all these white boxes on every right side row where we're working pattern, if the span is real long, like I, I can see one, two, three, one, two, three, but up here on row 19, if I don't go ahead and pre-count, I'm going to have to stop and check every time I come to it and make sure I don't make a mistake. And if I take my eye off the chart, I could have an awful mistake that throws everything out of, out of place. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Go ahead and put a 7 there. And I know to just knit 7. Every time I come here, I know to just knit seven. All right, now I'm gonna work. I'm gonna look at every right side row. Go up. I, like I said, I don't need to mark one, two, three. I'm okay with that. Or one, two. All right, I go up to the next row. Just keep going up row by row. The next row I find row 27. Look, one, two, three, four, five. Put a five there. Once I yarn over, I know to just knit five. I don't have to take my eye off the ball, off the chart, or do anything. All right, I move on over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I go ahead and put a seven, knit seven. See, it's just getting, it's just falling into place, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I move on over. One, two, three, four, five, put a five, knit five. I move on up. 
row by row. So when I get to row 35, watch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Put a 9. Now, I know the knit 9. I don't have to recount or think, oh my gosh, I don't. Oh, let me count again. Oh, let me count again. <laughs> it's knit 9. Go across. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Put a 7. I know the knit 7. On off on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Knit 9. And, of course, row 36 will be, uh, it'll be on the wrong side. But yet, since we're knitting in the round, we just knit all the stitches back to get back in place. Now, how easy is that? <laughs> just by preparing the chart. Now, last but not least, on uh, as you saw on the, on my uh, poncho, I added some extra lace on the front of the poncho so I know the front from the back. And it just looked nice to have that little extra. As you see, we're going to start knitting in just a moment. So I looked all over the chart. Remember, the chart holds everything you need. I'm telling you, it's all here. Once you learn how to discern, how to go through and pull out what you need. So I looked, and so I don't need to go to another book or go anywhere else or go check somewhere else. I found that if I would just, uh, in fact, I looked for a nice sequence of increase and decrease, and I decided row nine. This row is separated from all this other part of the chart, and I could see it clearly. So once I decided on row 9, I simply took a blue highlighter and just marked the stitches on row 9 that I need to make this little lace that I'm going to add to the front of the poncho. And on the right side of the chart, on the right side, and you'll see it in just a moment, I'm going to use knit two stitches together, then yarn over, then knit one, two, three, stop. I'll knit the chart. Now on the left side of the chart, when I'm finished, I want to add this lace again. But this time, I will start at knit three, one, two, three, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. It's leaning to the left, so slip, slip, knit, and voila. I have a beautiful lace that I took from the chart. It fits in because it's part of the chart. And oh, so easy. Now, what do you think about that? What I've shared with you. So, are you ready? I'll make sure you have a good screenshot uh, so that you can uh, uh, print your chart up. You can go ahead and, and put all your little um, highlighters and mark your rows and everything. And uh, we will get started. Back in just a moment. All right, we are ready to knit. Everyone should be at row five and ready to go. All right. We sh you should be at your, at the beginning of the round marker. Okay, I'm just gonna knit. Now I'm at the beginning of the round marker. I'm going to slide the marker. And then of course, everyone will have three stitches before we before the back marker. So I simply knit one, two, and three. Now I'm at the marker that represents the back of the chart. Okay, and I'm just to save time, I'm not I'm gonna just knit, I'm not gonna put any lace in the back of this sample. I'm just gonna wait till I get to the front. Those that want to do lace in the back, you feel comfortable enough to go ahead and get started that will be perfect. All right, so all I have to do is slide the marker, okay, row five right here. If you're not adding the lace, you, you still have to start with the yarn over, and you have to end with the yarn over. All right, so let me just show you how easy it is to, in, to grow this section of the poncho. So after I slide the marker, I yarn over, put the yarn over the needle. Now just knit across. Knit across to the opposite marker, just like this. Stop when you knit all the stitches. Put the extra 
yarn over at the end right there slide the marker and hold this yarn over you have to kind of hold it in place kind of stick your needle in and then hold that one and then just start knitting on this side of the poncho you're just knitting now it once you get started it goes really fast and first it doesn't look like it's doing much but you'll be surprised how quick it takes off okay let me just kind of get around all right just to save time so now with no lace in the back I, st I have two yarn overs where I started and where I ended all right after I slide the marker I'm going to continue to knit around until I come to I'll meet you as we get close to the front um, markers remember we have four markers in the front all right back in just a minute we're just we're working it now <laughs> can't back out now we're on our way <laughs> all right keep going we have worked our way around just knitting nice knit from our chart I am up as you can see there are four markers to represent my front all right so I knit up to the first marker oh now we're about to see it all right now remember I added five stitches before this is the five stitches one two three four five then the chart right in the center then five extra stitches over here here are the five stitches remember the border that I added right here I'm going to use row nine I marked it I highlighted it with the blue highlighter so I'd always know where to go back to pick up my little extra lace and this is how it's going to look I knit up to the marker the first marker the first border of lace slide the marker now it says knit two stitches together yarn over knit three stop that's it that's five stitches so I knit two stitches together just like this do a yarn over now there's three stitches left I knit those three one two and three stop now that's the marker for the chart I slide that marker now we go back to row five that's the thing you have to remember if you're gonna work the lace front and back you have to do everything twice so now I'm back at row five I start with a with a yarn over the needle just like this just take the yarn over the needle hope I wasn't in the shadow it just goes over the needle you know how to do just this is just to help the ones who are new all right now it says on row five knit two one two yarn over right there in the center then you're going to slip 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 two stitches reach back and knit those two together knit one stitch stop I have to add the lad the first and last yarn over so I yarn over again slide that marker stop now I'm on this side the left side of the chart the charts in the middle now I want to go back to row nine at row nine this time since I'm on the left side I'm going to start right here at knit one two three then a yarn over then slip slip knit all right so here we go you had that yarn over before the marker hold on to it now knit one two and three yarn over and then slip slip knit all right now you can slide the marker and you can breathe <laughs> so now we're on this side just knitting around in the long knit section but let's just stop a minute and see we have the beginning lace the little lace border here we have the chart in the center and then we have the left side of the lace there that we took from row nine all right now you're just going to continue to knit around and I will see you at the marker 
knit around and I'll see you at the marker and then I need to show you something. Now I'm coming up to my to the round the beginning of the round marker and once you get there I want you to just stop just maybe one stitch before. This is where we start counting the rounds or know if we're on the right side or the wrong side. All right, we just finished our first right side row, which is row five. We worked that row five everyone everywhere. Now we need to work row six. Well, row six, if we were knitting flat, would be the wrong side and we'd purl. But since we still need a wrong side, but we want to knit. So in order to keep it. Um, so that you'll know exactly where you are, let me show you this. We're going to make a flag. We're going to flag every time we do a wrong side row. We're going to make a little flag and put on there and you'll know all the flag will tell you that it's the wrong side and all you have to do is knit. So let me show you. First of all, find some really bright color yarn different than what you're knitting with. Here's my little gray and then here's this kind of matches my little markers, but anyway, just take about, I don't know, about three inches, I don't know, maybe four, because you can always cut it off, and then just wrap it in half, just like that, just, and then just make a little loop, you know, around your finger, at the top, you want just a little, you want something like that, like a little loop, and the two little legs, hanging down. That's our flag. Does that make sense? Okay, so now watch. Every time that I finish a right side uh, round, instead of rows, it's rounds, so I knit to the marker, beginning of the round, I slide the marker, and then I knit one stitch. It's hard just keeping these markers on, so that one stitch keeps the marker in place. Now I grab my flag, I slide it onto my needle just like that. Now the flag is up and the flag tells me right away, okay, you're starting a wrong side row. On this wrong side row knitting in the round, there's nothing to do but just knit every stitch. You don't have to work at anything because see, you see those yarn overs? That's what we have to take off. That's what we have to knit. We have to make sure we work all of these stitches. So it doesn't matter. Everyone, once the flag is up, you just simply knit around every stitch. Just kind of hold your foot. It'll, it'll lay down in just a minute. But make sure it's a nice bright or some kind of nice contrasting. See right, there's that last yarn over. So I, got, I have to knit it. Slide the marker. And just keep knitting. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to purl. You just knit. But in order to know that this is row six, and we don't get confused, we you're going to use the little flag so that you'll know. All right. So now I can just knit around. I'm going to knit around this quickly. And guess what? Once we finish this, I'll meet you as we get close to. Uh, the marker again, the beginning of the round. We'll take the flag off and we will start round seven. It's a right side row, so we won't need the flag. Flag is only for the wrong side. All right, so now we're just knitting around. This is the easy part. Knit around and I will see you as you get close to the beginning of the round marker and your flag. How easy is that? Now we are coming up to the marker. We've knit every stitch around. I get to the beginning of the round marker. And I'm using this red. And I like to go ahead, you might notice I mark it in a second place just in case something happens and this thing falls off or I'm like, oh mercy. <laughs> So you can mark it in, in an extra place if you want to. Use the same color if you can. All right, so I'm up to the beginning of the round marker, and I slide the marker. All right, so now I need to knit the next stitch. Remember, we always have those three stitches. That's where the flag goes, right in there. So now I'm up to where I can take the flag off. 
That's telling me, okay, Jay, now you have finished a wrong side row, a round. Oh, we're going to have problems with this rows and rounds, aren't we? <laughs> rounds. All right, so, I, but I go ahead, so I go up to the chart marker, the back. I ha I'm using two white. All right, now guess what? That's row seven. I have it marked right there, row seven. And we'll start... If you're putting a lace in row 7, you're going to just work the chart. I'll just read it real quick. This one. Yarn over. Knit 1. Knit 2 together. Let's lean into the right. Yarn over. Knit 1 here in the center. There's the center, but it's just a blank box. Then a yarn over. Then the one leaning to the left. Slip, slip, knit. Knit 1. Stop. Add the last yarn over. And then continue. For those that are not putting the lace in the back, I'm trying to help the, you know, people that need the help, okay? You simply slide the marker for row 7. Now, yarn over and just knit across. You're not putting the lace. You decided you, like, okay, Jay, you know, I'm new or whatever. Or I don't know if I want to do all that. I'll just do this. And I share it with you, you know, from that sample. It's going to look just as pretty. All right, so I get up to that last stitch before the marker. Now stop. I always remember, you have to end. You start with the yarn over, and you have to end with the yarn over in order to make it grow. So yarn over, slide the marker. Now I just hold it in place. I kind of hold it with my thumb. And then I start knitting around because I'm trying to knit around now to get to the front because everyone will work the lace in the front plus the extra lace on each side. All right, so just to save time and I can get a lot more done, I'm going to knit around until I get to my first marker in the front. You're just knitting now. We're on the right side because the flag is down, so I know I'm on row seven. I'm not confused. <laughs> Back in just a moment. Now we are on round seven in the front of our poncho. We've worked up to the front section of the poncho for round seven. Okay, so I get up and I just knit right up to the first marker. And before I even slide that first marker, remember this is the extra lace on this side. Here's the chart in the center, but the lace is on this side and this side. So you I know right away to go to row 9 because I have it in blue. And in row 9, let me just get up to the marker. So I knit up and I slide the marker. Now take my eye to row 9. I have 5 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I start out with knit 2 stitches together. See those? Look at your work. You'll be able to read it right away. I knit 2 stitches together. Then I yarn over. Now knit three. There's three stitches right there. So I knit one, two, and three. All right. Now stop. Slide that marker. Now that puts me into the chart. What, what, what round are we on in the chart? We're on round seven. See, we're just on round seven. So let's go and do it. We yarn over. We uh, knit one. Then we knit two stitches together, then yarn over, knit one, okay, now stop. I want you to notice where this knit one falls. It, it's in the pink box right here, so that means it's in the center of the chart, and right there, it's on top of another, we're making a eyelet, or you have, we'll say hold, on top of another. But knit one, then you're going to yarn over again. Now we're on this side of the center. We're yarning over. And then the last symbol is a slip, slip, reach back and knit. And then I have an empty box, so I knit one. And then I have to remember to add that last yarn over, just like that. Slide the marker. 
hold that yarn over in place and then just all right this is now you have to stop and think for a minute I almost passed it myself okay once I finish and add this yarn over then I have to go back up to row nine <laughs> it you're gonna it, it's gonna be a breeze I promise you you go back to row nine but in starting instead of starting at the beginning you start at knit one two three yarn over slip slip knit because it's on the left side of our chart so after I let's just back up I'm gonna back up just so that you can see well I dropped that but I'll pick it up I'll get another that's so why you should have extra ones let's just get right back here so that you I finished the chart and I have to make the last yarn over I slide the marker now I know that I have this left side to do and right off the bat you can see three stitches can you see them okay so I knit one two three yarn over now I have a symbol leaning to the left so I'm going to slip slip and reach back and knit those two just like that and then before all right that's five stitches you should have a uh, one two three four five that's all you have to remember you should have five stitches now I slide the marker okay and then I just start knitting knitting around to the back or to the beginning of the round marker I hope I didn't botch that did I botch it but we, we got plenty of practice so don't worry if I kind of had a little hard time the more we continue to knit it's going to get easier and easier and you're not even going to it you're not even going to sweat <laughs> but that's what you should have it's not much you mean I can see it that much on mine but just take a look at what you have all right so now look we're going to knit all the way around and I will see you as you get to the beginning of the round. And I'm going to see how quickly you can transition from right side to the wrong side. All right, I'll see you in just a minute. I'm going to knit as fast as I can and I will be back shortly. I am back around to the beginning of my round marker right here so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that I just knit up to the marker can you see my red marker I slide the marker now I have those three stitches I'm going to knit just one stitch after the marker stop just do it in the same place so that you'll form a rhythm here are my flags make more than one because I always drop them they always get knocked off and I can't find the flag <laughs> so just make more than one make several just you know, four inches and put your little loop at the top all right so after I slide the marker and knit one I'm gonna put my mark my flag up because I know this has to be a wrong side round because if you ever if you can't remember go to any place you have a yarn over if that yarn over is not has not been worked see how it's just laying over the needle that means I have to that this is a that I need to work it on a wrong side so this is round eight the wrong side my flag is up so now all it tells me is to just sit back and chill and just knit see there's the first yarn over right there you see that so you know right away that's a, this should be a wrong side row that's what tells you I start knitting around I can just chill and knit now I don't have to purl I don't have to you know because the flag is up if I go out and go somewhere and have to run back and you know maybe I had to go pick up something and come back okay now where was oh I see my flag the flag is up so I know I'm on a wrong side row I am just knitting all the stitches just like this see there's another yarn over see it has not been worked or knit so I have to knit it slide the marker and continue around so this would be round eight 
and my flag is up. There you go, all the way around. We're not working, putting anything in, we're not reading a chart, we're just knitting every stitch. Okay? Alright, so now continue working around. I will see you when you get back to the marker, and we will be on round number nine. Round number nine, we will work it uh, when we get to the front. All right, but I will see you back at the beginning of the round as we get ready to start nine. <laughs> all these numbers. See, this is the this is the part. See, that once you're working it at home, you're not trying to show and teach and remember and doing all this that we have to do when we're doing the tutorial. You're just being like, okay, I'm on nine. Okay, I need to do that. Okay, put the flag up. Take the flag down. <laughs> I got to remember to do all that because I'm trying to share it with you and trying to get you into steps or rhythm. And so once I let you on, off on your own, you'll be like, oh, Jay, I got this. All right. I'll work around and I'll see you shortly. I am... I have knitted around to my marker, so I'm coming up. I have a red marker to let me know that's the beginning of the round. All right, and I slide the marker and I knit that one stitch, and I see that my flag that represented a wrong side, it represented a uh, round eight. I'm just going to lay it over here. All right, so now I can go right here. I've got my little this also helps, too, to have some of these little um, sticky things here. So I've got it right here at, at round nine. And just to remind me, a lot of things going on, but won't be long. You'll have it down. All right, so now I'm, I'm in the very center back. That's where the chart is. If you are working lace in there you will go to row uh, round nine and start working it yarn over knit one uh, then you have knit two together yarn over knit one two three yarn over slip slip knit knit one and in with the yarn over you've got your printout all right for those who are new and you're just working it plain without all the lace you just come up slide the marker okay but you have to make that yarn over that's the main thing. Now you just knit all the stitches across to this next marker. So you're just knitting across. This is just to help. After I get you going, then I'll just work on the front on uh, reading the chart in the front. All right, so I get up to the last stitch before the marker. You see that? All right, I knit it. All right, this is uh, round nine. Now watch. I bring the yarn around the needle, slide the marker, hold that yarn over in place, and just start knitting towards the front of the poncho. And you see how you are increasing, but you're not putting any lace in. You're just putting the yarn overs. That's the increase. That's the raglan for this poncho. So make sure that you take your time and don't forget to put those yarn overs. Okay, so now I'll just work around. I just hate to waste the film. Let's see if I can, let's see, can I make it around. Okay, what can we talk about? <laughs> hmm. You know, this is why a lot of people may be afraid to try some um, tutorials, you know. I didn't know if I could do it either. I just tried it, you know. I thought, well, I'll try it and, you know, had to, had to live and learn as I went through. Some people said, oh, oh, you know, we want you to hear more who you are and talk. Well, then when I start talking, then after a while, after a few years, people say, oh, you're talking too much. I just said, Lord, help me. <laughs> so then, oh my gosh. So that's, that's hard. That has been hard. 
because since I don't really see people anymore, I, you know, we don't meet in our knit groups. They're sick and, you know, people, things happen, you know. So we haven't done anything since COVID. So, um, yeah, it's, it's his own time I get to talk. But, you know, after a while, enough people, you know, oh, you, you know. I said, okay, yeah, that's making the tutorials too long because I'm talking and telling my little stories and, you know. So that's what I'm trying, and I hope you have seen that I'm really thinking and trying to uh, work more and talk this. <laughs> All right. Oh, look, I made it. Okay, so now I'm up to the front of my poncho. All right, before I go any further, it's just... You know, we have have a lace section. We have the chart in the middle and the second lace. This is the right lace. This is a chart. This is the left side lace. All right, so I know I have to go to row nine, or round nine. We'll just... All right. <laughs> All right. I slide the marker, and I go to my blue. Okay, I'll just say let's go to our blue section. All right, for the lace. All right, it starts out start out with knit two stitches together. I'm in my little blue section. Knit two stitches together, yarn over, now knit three. One, two, and three. Okay, stop. Now I go back up to the beginning of the round. I have to go here now because now I'm going to work the chart all the way across on round nine. So I take I slide the marker. Round nine starts with yarn over, knit one. Knit two stitches together. Yarn over. Now knit three. There are my three friends. I can't wait till we start repeats because we're going to be working with landmarks. But there's my three friends that are landmarks. So I knit one, two, and three. All right, now I'm on this side of the center. See, I've knit one, two, three. Now over here, I want to do a yarn over and a slip, slip knit. So I yarn over, I do a slip, slip knit, reach back, and knit it. Then I have one stitch left, one blank box, so I knit that, but I I'm not finished until I add the last yarn over, slide the marker, stop. Now I am on the left lace, the left side, see, so on the left side of the chart. On the left side, we go back, we're using the same, I go back to my blue. And I start with, just look at the stitch, right off the back, you'll see three stitches, can you see them? One, two, three. Okay, so I know I'm going to start with knit three, hold that yarn over, knit three, one, two, and three, then the yarn over, then the slip, slip, knit. All right, then I slide the marker, and guess what? I can breathe. I can breathe as I work around, all the way around to the marker. All right, so let me tell you this so that you can be ready when we get to my beginning of the round marker. As you can see, it's getting hard to see and for me to even show you what I have. So I'm going to go ahead and change. I'm going to get another nine uh, needle. But I'm going to get one that's longer, maybe 36 inches or 40. Can't go too long. But you, uh, we can uh, now change needles so that we can spread the stitches out more. And it's best to do it on a wrong side round. So once I get to my round, I am going to be on, we'll be on the wrong side for 10. And this is where we need to change our needle. To a longer length if you're working with circular needles. Does that make sense? All right.
continue around and I'll see you at the marker. X marks the spot. As you can see, I am making my way around to the beginning of the beginning marker. Remember X marks the spot. Just a little quickie, we just finished working round number nine, the lace, the chart. All right, and I said if you were, I want to go ahead and make sure I got this on camera anyway, but if you need, uh, you feel like, okay, Jay, my, my stitches are getting real tight, I said look around in your stash. Hopefully you have a needle just a little larger. It doesn't have to be super large now because the, we, you know, the circle's not that huge yet. We hadn't started to repeat. It'll start getting larger quicker. But anyway, I found a needle of just a little bit longer than what I started with. And so this might be a, I don't know, a nine, number nine, still number nine, but a 930, maybe. Okay, not very much. A uh, 32, or something like that. 34, I don't know what to come in. All right, so this is what I'm trying, though, to get. Anytime we need to change our needle to up the size as we, as this uh, puncho begins to grow when we start doing actual repeats. All right, go to two stitches before the beginning marker. Two stitches. I like to change it on this side of the marker. Makes it easier. I do it on all my other things, so you've seen it if you've worked with me. So I take my new needle that I need to get these knit these stitches on too two stitches before the marker and you might want to cap you may want to cap that that needle and pull the stitches pull the needle up a little bit now I'm ready to simply just take this needle and remember this is we finished round nine so this is this is round ten this is the side that we're gonna flag it was like the reverse side so I want to make sure I have me a flag. We'll do that. But I just stick my needle in, grab my yarn, make sure, just make sure it's just lined up from the back where I put my new needle in. And I do it this way all the time, the same way, so I don't have to think about it. So I go ahead and knit those two stitches. All right, now I slide the marker beginning of the round we're starting now 10 but I need to go ahead and put the next stitch to hold the marker that, that keeps the marker in place then I grab my flag some nice bright color yarn and remember on this side uh, knitting in the round all we have to do is just go and knit every stitch if you're not sure like okay Jay, I got a little confused where am I all right remember just knit over to where you where the pattern starts or where you see a yarn over. If that yarn over is not worked, see it's just a long piece of strand, then you know we are on the wrong side or it should be on the side where we're just going to knit all the stitches. And that's all we're doing. And it makes it a lot easier to just do it from this needle to this needle. And I didn't get, they're not the same brand or anything. There's not really, um, a true gauge or something to this this little poncho you know how some people have, well you gotta have the same needle same. I just need as long as it's a number nine or whatever you're working with there's a second yarn over see I can tell that has not been worked see the space in there so I need to knit it slide the marker now I can just knit and chill chill and knit oh yeah that's I can chill and knit <laughs> oh we are just knitting around because you don't have to purl make it nice and easy this is 10 so what I'm gonna do is continue to knit around knitting the stitches from this needle oh the older needle because it's a, it's getting tight to one that's just a hint larger and I will see you back when we get to round 11 that is officially the right side. Does that make sense? All right, let me continue. I want you to continue too. Back in just a moment. Now, let's see. I am up. I have knit around to mark an eight. As you can see, I'm on my little 
longer needle so it's not quite as scrunched up. I think this might be a 936 or something. Anyway, just a little larger. Not, not, don't overdo it. All right, so now I see that I'm coming up. You can see that I'm knitting around now. Everybody's kind of in, getting into the groove now. Uh, you see the flag, so you know I had to be on, I was on round 10. So I'm coming up. Now, once I get to the new round marker, I'm going to slide that marker. And I'm starting round 11, so I can take the flag off. Because 11, I know, is the right side. Because, look, the numbers are on this side of the chart. Numbers on this side, remember all the charts we've done? They're on this side. But let's stop and look before I go any further. 11, round 11. Well, it's a right side row, J, but there's nothing there. They're all blank boxes. So I, do I just yarn over and knit across? That's what it says. Just yarn over and knit across. So that makes that real easy until we get to the front. When we get to the front, we have to pick up the lace. And I just, what I was doing is something says, go ahead and just outline the whole little blue area. I made it into a blue box. I didn't want to cut cover color it all in. I just outlined it and made it a blue box. See that? Now I can say we need to go to the blue box. <laughs> so I, have to, I have to help myself too. Alright, so real quick now as I come around, see you just, I took the flag off. So now officially I am on round 11 and there's when I come up to the first marker. Okay. We have to yarn over. That's the only thing there. Yarn over and I just knit around, knit to the next marker. This is the back. This is the center back. So I just knit around. Till we get to the, I'll do this part. See, I'm just there's my marker. So I'm just going to knit around. I knit all the way up to the last stitch. Stop. Now I've knit all the way across and I have to add that last yarn over on round 11. So yarn over, see, just yarn over, slide the marker, and then hold that yarn over in place and continue to knit around. Continue to chill and knit. <laughs> okay, I will see you when we get to the blue box. I like that better. Now I can kind of help go a little faster. All right, knit around, and I'll see you at the blue box. Now I am coming up to the blue box, and I looked over there to see if I thought, you know what? Why don't I change and put a blue marker <laughs> to help me to remember this is the blue box? So I come up to the blue box as I'm knitting around towards the front. We are on round 11. Okay, but I still have to work, so I'm going to slide the blue marker. Now I'm in the blue box. All right, it says right here, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, two, three, stop. Okay, so because you only have five stitches, so knit two stitches together, yarn over, knit one, two, three. You see the three stitches right there? One, two, three. Now I am in the chart round 11 slide the marker there's nothing in on round 11 except to yarn over knit all the way across it was just a real strange row but <laughs> knit all the way across and I, it's the only one like that. it's the only row like this so so i just knit across this is the very front of the puncher now the center front now when I get to the opposite uh, when I knit across those stitches all right remember I have to then yarn over right here we we had to start with the yarn over knit across in with the yarn over slide the marker now I'm in the blue box and I start with, the first thing you see is knit three. You see three stitches. So I knit, hold that yarn over in place. Knit one, two, and three. Then yarn over. 
and the last stitch in the blue box will be a slip slip because it's on the left slip slip knit then I'll take this marker I'll make it a blue marker too so now I have just fun I buy this stuff and I won't ever use it so now I can slide the marker and guess what I can just knit on around till I get to the beginning of the round marker now we're going to stop and talk a minute let me just make sure everything is sealed here that you can see here's the front lace of my poncho I can tell now since I changed the marker where my blue box starts all right let's see let me just go ahead because we have to save time we've got quite a bit to go this is not one of those you know quickie little project it's a nice knit it's gonna turn out really nice now listen we worked around round 11 now you're going to get to round 12 you'll flag it because it's on you know unofficially wrong side but you'll just knit back round 13 all right we are not repeating it so that's why you don't see the yellow highlight you just don't even pay attention to these dark lines yet so you'll go to round 13 now you're going to be doing some homework you're going to be doing skill building all right you're simply going to go all the way and you're just going to work this uh, that that round then 14 you'll flag it and knit back then you'll then you'll start working 15. this is just good skill building because like I said all the, the symbols are the same all the way through we've already pre-counted there's nothing to throw you it's like uh, you're learning to, you know how when you learn how to roller skate or, or get that first bicycle and you got those training wheels are coming off <laughs> so you do 15 then flag 16 coming knitting back work row 17 and flag 18 coming back and so forth and each time you start in the front you'll have these little I went ahead just and you might want to try this too says okay just remind me okay when I come to the front look for the blue box so I, I changed and to put two blue markers to show me there's only five stitches so all you got to do is I always count if you think well how many one two three four five five stitches for each blue box one two three four five does it make sense all right just to save time it's just repetition it's we're taking the training wheels off a little bit and we're just gonna, I'm gonna let you do some knitting and I will join you uh, a few rows up I'll just go ahead and be working so that when it's time to repeat then of course I will come back and then we will come back and start to repeat and I'll just work with you a few rows there too. So this is the end of part two. So take your time and I'll see you shortly. I'll see you back. <laughs> Happy knitting.